Let's talk some chess. This game was played in 1933. Paul Karras has the white pieces. The player with the black pieces is named Verbach. And Karras here opens with d4. We have d5, uh, e4, uh, black plays e6, and then Karras puts his bishop on e3. This allows black to take the pawn on e4, but it also allows Karras to develop a piece with tempo, so he brings his knight to d2, obviously attacking the pawn, and black says, I'm up a pawn, I want to defend my pawn, and pushes f5. And this is early, uh, an early sign of black's materialistic nature in this game, um, really just wants to go after those pawns instead of worrying about developing his pieces, and as we all know, that usually doesn't end well. Karras uh, pushes f3 here, trying to break up this pawn structure, pawn structure, and black takes back on f3, which allows Karras to develop a piece with tempo. So now he has three pieces developed, and uh, black obviously has zero pieces developed. Again, not usually a good thing. Uh, black decides to try to get back in the development game with knight to f6, and Karras completes the development of his minor pieces with bishop to d3. Here, I'm not really sure about this move, but black plays c5, obviously, I guess, threatening the d4 pawn, but but not quite sure. And Karras takes the opportunity to get his king to safety with a king side castle. So now we have pawn takes on d4, uh, threatening the, the bishop, of course. So Karras takes back with the knight on d4. Uh, the queen is attacking the knight, but it's defended by the bishop. And this position is okay. You, you can play this position as black. I think all of us would prefer to have white in this position, but it, it's doable. Uh, but this is where black made the losing move, and the losing move in this case is f4. The idea is that you want to, I think the idea is that you want to threaten the bishop. The bishop maybe has to move away, you know, from the defense of the knight, but I, I, I'm not really sure. But the problem is that black doesn't realize that here, um, Karras can just play rook takes on f4. And this looks like kind of a silly move. It looks like it's inviting disaster because it allows this e5 move, which appears to fork the knight and the rook. The problem with this fork is that you can't take this pawn back, so it looks like you're just losing one of your pieces. However, Karras has thought ahead and calculated and realized that this is actually not a problem because of the devastating attack he's about to deliver, which begins with bishop to b5. You're obviously checking the king, um, and there are many pieces that black can block with, um, but blocking will not prevent the rest of Karras' attack, so black here decides instead of blocking to sort of try to run his king away to safety, castle artificially on the king side, tries to bring it to uh, f7, and maybe you'll be able to escape and kind of bring the rook out. But Kara says, no, 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 you're not going to have time for that. I am putting my queen on h5 with check. The knight cannot take the queen because it's pinned uh, by the rook. So you really, you know, you could try to move the king away, but that's, that's probably not a good idea. Um, uh, so the best move here is just to block with the pawn on g6. Um, and now there's a lot of moves that, that work for uh, white. I mean, <laughs> queen takes on e5 looks pretty good, threatening the knight. All your pieces are around in the vicinity of the king. But the better move, which, which Karras, of course, found, is bishop to c4, um, checking the king once again. And now you're in a lot of trouble um, as black. You, you can't block now if you put the bishop on uh, e6. You're just going to get bishop takes anyways because the bishop is defended by the knight so instead black tries to tuck his king away in the corner with g7 but now he's run into checkmate in three moves um so see if you can find the winning move here for karis well, i'll give you a second or two okay kind of a, a tricky move to find and many moves work here i think again queen takes on e5 looks totally fine to me um but the fastest and simplest way to checkmate is just sacrificing your queen on h6. So this is obviously check. The bishop is slicing off the king's retreat. Um, the dark square bishop, which was not developed, is, you know, not that it would help in this case, but it's it's blocking the king as, as is the rook. So the only move for black here is to take the queen on h6. But this allows uh, rook to h4, double check. Uh, the bishop is delivering check. The rook is deliver delivering check, so the king must move. It doesn't have a choice anyways. Uh, well, I guess you, you could block, if it wasn't double check, you could block with a knight on h5, but because it's double check, the king must move. So a really nice little uh, sequence from, from Karis here. So the king retreats to g7, and now the finishing touches, uh, bishop to h6, checkmate. And now you have, obviously, this bishop slicing this way, this bishop slicing, slicing this way, and the king cannot take the bishop because the rook is defending it. So a really nice kind of finishing picture here because if you remember the queen's sacrifice, uh, this would be checkmate if the queen was defended, but it's not. So after king takes, uh, rook comes to the h file, and now this allows for the support of the bishop to deliver this checkmate. And again, no detail, you know, 
no detail has gone uh, missed here by Karis. If you know we were, if uh, during this uh, rook to h4 check, if the knight can come to h5, then white's in trouble because now white's down a queen. The attack has been sort of stymied, but because of the double check from the bishop, that is not allowed. So just. Maybe that's the move that, that Black missed, but just a, a really fun ending, a really nice final picture. And a good lesson to not be too materialistic about pawns in the beginning, in the opening, because uh, before you know it, white could be checkmating you. Um, the last thing I want to note is you'll remember this nice uh, e5 fork that we thought that Black played, looking like he would pick up one of white's pieces. Um, Karis's attack was so sudden and deadly that he never had time to actually achieve uh, the ambitions of that fork. So uh, another good lesson. Uh, in, in the opening. So hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Drop a like and a subscribe and we will see you next time.